Good afternoon, humanities and social sciences learners. You miss my voice? Ah, probably yes, because it seems to be a long time since we see each other. I am your teacher broadcaster Bonifacio Lorenzo Jr. for your creative writing specialized subject. Before we start, you need to be in the most comfortable place and quiet place for you to focus on our discussion. Second, grab your pens or pencils, paper or notebooks, your answer sheet, your module, and if you have a dictionary, you can have it on your side. Are you ready? Oh, I know you're excited to learn something new in this broadcast. Grab your module in Creative Writing, Module 5, Lesson 2, and open it on page 1. We will be talking about types of characters and point of view. Specifically, this will equip you with the necessary skills you need in recognizing a narrator's point of view, types of character in a fiction, and eventually developing a character in a literary piece. Vocabulary Builders Let us first crystallize your knowledge on the following terms. These terms will be used along the activities in this module. Match the meaning in the match me table with the words in the box. I'll be reading for you the content of the table. Let's start with letter A. What is the word that refers to the main character of the story? Correct! The answer is protagonist. Letter B. This refers to the villain in the story. That is right! It's antagonist. Letter C. Is the name for the methods a writer used to reveal a character's values, feelings, goals to readers. You are right. The word is characterization. How about letter B? This word refers when a writer conveys information about the character by telling the information directly to the reader. Wonderful! The word is direct characterization. And lastly, letter E. This word is essentially the eyes through which a story is told. Awesome! The right word is point of view. Now that you're familiar with the words given in the vocabulary builder, let's have a warm-up. I know you're ready to conquer your fears in creative writing. This activity will prepare you developing your character. Do you imagine someone with notable looks, habits, thoughts, etc? Give him or her a name and let us realize how he or she might exist in real world. Write words or phrases inside the character map shown on your module that give distinct description to your character. You can use the answer sheet provided or a separate paper. I'll give you a minute to do it. You can start now.
Time is up! Have you named your character? That's wonderful! Nice name! Do you like what come out of your output? Well, you are one who built your character! Maybe that is one of your crushes! Great! If you did all this seamlessly, you are extremely ready for more challenging tasks ahead! Characters can't be separated from action. We come to understand a character by what he or she does. In stories, characters drive the plot. The plot depends on the character situations and how they respond to it. The actions that occur in the plot are only believable if the character is believable. Let's now talk about the types of character. First type is the protagonist or the hero. They are the central figure whom we usually sympathize or identify. We also have the antagonist or the villain, the figure whom opposes the protagonist and creates the conflict. Lastly, is the foil character. This is the figure whose personality traits are the opposite of the main characters. This is the supporting and usually made to shine the protagonist. Can you name again the types of character? Very good! Let's now learn the way characters are portrayed in a story. They are portrayed as flat character or stock, static character or stereotypes. They have no depth and no change. We only see one side as or aspect of them. Most supporting characters are portrayed in this way. For example, a strict teacher, a helpful policeman, and an evil step stepmother. They are also portrayed as round character or dynamic character. They have more fully developed personalities. We expect the protagonist and antagonist to be rounded individuals who expresses a range of emotion and change throughout the narrative, usually toward greater maturity. How about how the characters are revealed? Let's look Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. They are revealed by these ways. A. What the narrator says about the character. B. What the other character says about the character. C. What the character says about himself or herself. And D what the character actually does. Though the writer should know everything there is to know about his character, he should present his knowledge of the character indirectly, through dialogue and action. Still, sometimes a summary of a character's traits needs to be given. For example, for characters who play the supporting cast in a story. Direct description of the character's trait keep the story from slow or from slowing down. Direct characterization? Huh? 
The red characterization is telling the information directly to the reader. This is done through narration when the author comes right out and tells the reader things about the character. For example, the writer might tell us Sarah was the smartest in the family, or that Sarah was tall for her, for her age and had an athletic build. Indirect characterization, on the other hand, shows the readers the characters' traits without explicitly describing them. Any writing that helps infer or reduce things about a person's personality. Examples of indirect characterization are First, dialogue, where a character's bossy, kind, mean, or other qualities came true. Second, actions, what a character does. For example, Jumping on a beetle to squash it reveals, incidentally, their characters. In this case, that the character is needlessly unkind or violent. And third, description. Although association differ from country to country, culture to culture, how a character looks often gives indirect characterization. Wow, you're learning fast! Can you tell me how the characters are revealed? That's awesome! You really remembered it! Let's move on to the point of view or the POV and its type. First, let's define it. Point of view is essentially the eyes or angle throughout or through which a story is told. It is the narrative voice through which readers follow the story's plot, meet its characters, discover its setting, and enter into its relationships, emotions, and conflicts. We also have types of point of view. First one is the first person point of view. In the first person point of view, one of the story's characters serves as a narrator and reader watch the story unfold through the character's eyes. First person point of view is easy to identify because the character or narrator speaks to readers in his or her own voice, frequently using the pronoun I. The second one is the second person point of view. The second person point of view is relatively rare because it makes the reader a character in the story and directly addresses the readers as you, it as you. It allows readers to make decision that affects the story's plot and lead to various outcomes. And the third one is the third person point of view. In the third person point of view, the narrator is someone outside the story who frequently uses the pronouns like he, she, and they to describe the characters. And under the third person point of view are its subcategories. Number one, the objective third person and which the narrator knows or reveals nothing about the character's internal thoughts, feelings, and motivations, but sticks to the external facts of the story, as in Nathaniel Hawthorne, The Scarlet Letter. Number two, the limited third person in which the narrator describes the internal thoughts, feelings, and motivations of one character, usually the main character as in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series. Number three is the omniscient third person, in which the narrator knows and at least partially reveals the internal thoughts, feelings, and motivations of all the characters, as in E.B. White's 
Charlotte Webb. Wonderful! We have just finished discussing the POC or point of view. Can you name them? Very good! The first person, second person, and the third person point of view. You really listen to our lesson? How about the subcategories of the third person point of view? Great! You got it right! Well, written fictional, characters should come alive and real enough to live in our memories long after the story ended. In short, fictional characters are treated the same way we treat people. Now, let's keep practicing by doing the keeping you in practice. But this time, I'll let you do it yourself after our broadcast. Just follow the instruction from your module and after doing the activity, answer thinking about it. Write your answer on the answer sheet provided. To conclude our lesson and assess your understanding about our topic, let's do cooling down. It would be a long activity, that is why I'm letting you do it at home. Read the instruction carefully and follow it. There should be 8 paragraphs to complete your task. Rubrics is provided for you to come up with a great at output. After having your output, reflect and answer the question and think about it. Submit your answer sheets on Monday. Good luck! Did you enjoy our lesson? Or did you enjoy our journey understanding character and point of view of a fiction? Well, that it, that's it for today. Until next week as we continue our journey about fiction. That is Module 5, Lesson 3. This has been your teacher broadcaster, Teacher Bonifacio Lorenzo. And this is Creative Writing Specialized Subject for Humanities and Social Sciences. Bye-bye!